This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report, as we end today's show with a groundbreaking documentary on the climate crisis and the global food system. The film is called Ant The Ants and the Grasshopper. It follows the journey of Anita Chitaya, a farmer and activist in Malawi, with the Soils, Food and Healthy Communities Project, as she tries to end hunger and gender inequality in her village and tackle climate crisis in the United States. This is the film's trailer. I have this gift. I do reach people. How can you allow your partner to suffer with too much work? A Malawian activist. It rains for us maybe three times a year. All the crops dry out. It's on a mission. Soil, food and healthy communities taught us that it was climate change because of what they're doing in places like America. If you want someone to change, you go to their doorstep with your problem. Anita Chitaya and her friends are traveling across America. I feel like I'm dreaming, and I wonder when I will wake up. To meet farmers and community leaders. God said, you can increase like sand, but he never <laughs> said, spoil the atmosphere. I don't see it as an issue. That's my problem. To talk about climate change. How are you seeing the climate affecting your family? We see it more as a political agenda. It would take a global catastrophe to do a complete 180. <laughs> the truth takes long to spread, <laughs> while the lies spread fast here. <laughs> but I still have faith. From Raj Patel, author of Stuffed and Starved, producer of life itself and city so real. There are so many ants, but only a few are lifting the grasshopper. The ants and the grasshopper. That's the trailer for The Ants and the Grasshopper. For more, we are joined by the co-director Raj Patel in Austin, Texas. We spoke with him about his new book with Dr. Rupa Maria, titled Inflamed Deep Medicine and the Anatomy of Justice. Your film is now making its way through film festivals. It's interesting. It comes out at the same time as Inflamed, COVID, the climate emergency. Talk about the theme of this film and why you did it. Well, I mean, if, if there's a connection, and I, th I think there's a very deep one, uh, it's that uh, if we are to address the climate crisis, if we are to address the the origins of COVID and the the, the, the rage of the pandemic, uh, we need to engage in a kind of decolonization. That's what Rupert and I were talking about when, we, when we're thinking about deep medicine. What, what we mean is to repair the bonds that have been severed by colonial capitalism, bonds between human beings, uh, bonds between humans and the rest of the web of life. And what Anita Chitaya and her colleagues in the Soils, Food and Healthy Communities Project are doing is learning uh, certain kinds of agroecological farming techniques on the land, but also learning that you can't end hunger without addressing gender inequality uh, and ad addressing not just inequality within the home, but inequalities between countries. And so her journey to the United States was one uh, that you know, really wanted to put in the front lines the wisdom of communities of people of color and the solutions that they're coming up with. Because you know, too often when it comes to thinking about how are we going to solve this problem, either we medicalize it and we're like, OK, take an injection, everything's going to be fine, or we, uh, you know, we point to sort of individual therapies, uh, or we have one white saviors going to the global south saying, you know, if only you have more wind turbines, everything's going to be great. But in fact, some of the best technology, some of the best solutions for addressing the climate crisis and the health crisis are coming from frontline communities, whether in the United States in you know, the, the, the we, we have a, a scene in the film with the Detroit uh, Black Community Food Security Network's Malik Yakini, uh, where he's talking about the, the steps that frontline communities in Detroit are taking. Uh, and that resonates very directly with the kinds of uh, ideas that are coming from uh, peasant movements 
movements from around the world. And so in this film, what we're trying to do is decolonize the view of how it is that we fix the climate crisis and the health crisis by foregrounding the wisdom of uh, you know, peasants from around the world, whether they're in the United States or from Malawi. I want to turn to another scene from The Ants and the Grasshopper that you just described, where Anita Chitaya meets with the frontline communities in the U.S. who are fighting against the climate crisis and its catastrophic impacts. Here, Anita Esther uh, visit Malik Yakini, as you said, executive director of the Detroit Black Community Food Security Network, founding member of D-Town Farm in Detroit. So that's the other thing, is we're creating a model of democracy. Our organization thinks capitalism and white supremacy is a terrible way of defining human relationships and so and patriarchy as well so at the same time that we and many other people are working to dismantle these oppressive systems we're creating these models of how we might relate to each other that's more equitable that society begins to shift mm -hmm. We, we use regenerative practices here that don't contribute much to global warming this is a rainwater retention pond and we're able to capture tens of thousands of gallons of rainwater in here, and then we run it back down through the fields using drip irrigation tape. And this is our solar energy station. Many farmers would like to not participate in the industrial style of farming, but they feel trapped. They don't know how to survive without the use of lots of petroleum and extremely large amounts of water. We have to show how that can be done so farmers can even see that there's a possibility of doing it and still earning a living. Yeah, that's very true, because you cannot tell someone without uh, showing what is the alternative. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Just like we're planting seeds in the ground, we're planting seeds in people's consciousness. An excerpt from The Ants and the Grasshopper. We just have 15 seconds. Rash Patel, why uh, Danita want to come to the United States with her message from Malawi? Because she believes that we can change. And uh, I think, you know, the, the, the message of the pandemic and of this moment is uh, not only that we, we must recognize that an injury to one is an injury to all, but there is the possibility of change and that it's never too late.